You don't have to know a lot of things in order to make a huge difference for the Lord in the world. But you do need to know a few things that are great and be willing to live for them and die for them. Will I let Jesus prove to me that he's truly my strength? To let him prove inside of me that through him I can do all things. The True Strength Life Podcast with Aaron Simpkins. What's up, everybody? Okay, so this is going to be hopefully a shorter episode, um, but I do want to get this out. I do want to get this out. This is Election Day 2024. Election Day is is always a very, uh, how do I put this, exciting and anxious and stress-filled day for a lot of people, but <clears throat> it's something... It's something I really like. I really like it. I'm 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 into it. I like uh I like paying attention um to what's going on. I, I uh obviously am you know, you follow the channel. I'm not afraid to talk about politics, not afraid not afraid to, to be engaged. I mean I I literally just had on um Teddy Liddell, had a good conversation with him, just put that episode out a couple days ago. Somebody who's running for Congress and, and is in the middle of it right now. So no stranger to it. Um, I like to think about these things. Granted, I don't know everything about politics. I, I think it's one of those subjects where nobody could know everything. Nobody can know all the different angles and different dynamics that uh, that go into it. Um, we, we, we are never going to know the full background or inside story of every single person that's that's running for every single position. Um, yes, I do. I do. (laughs) This is going to little, this is hypocritical on my part. I do fully believe that local elections are more important for our day-to-day lives than the presidential election, but the presidential election is the one that always gets all of our attention. So I, I, and, and it gets my, it gets my attention too. I I am not nearly engaged in, in local politics like I should be. Um, I, uh, that's one run reason why I was really excited to talk to Teddy the other day, um, because he is potentially going to be a local official that actually will be the official of my district, um, would, would be my congressman. So I, I think that's cool, but on a small town level, like I need to know who our superintendents i need to know sheriffs mayors school board like i should know that type of stuff and quite honestly i don't at this point but i think most people see here's the thing though unfortunately unfortunately most people don't engage in politics like at all on any level and and they're not even in the presidential they're they're they may end up voting but they're they're not they're still not like engaged and actually informed on it. So uh and and to be honest with you the one that drives me the most nuts is Christians. Is Christians who don't even vote because they just feel like I I I don't know how many Christians I've heard or see use the excuse that oh God appoints a leader so I I don't doesn't matter what I do. I don't, it doesn't matter. I get that. I do. I get that biblically because I agree God appoints leaders. But there still is this this divine mystery that plays out where we do live in a constitutional republic that it, that elects democratically which means the people have a vote. And so, yes, I agree that at the end of the day, God already knows who's going to win. God already has that 
that that person uh it's already it's already it's already planned out it's it's already known by god god already knows what's going to happen but on our end on the human side we don't know that so we we still uh again in this divine mystery where where god already has it he already knows but on the human perspective we still can have a part to play and that's why I think it's so important to vote as a Christian because because politics is one of those things it's it's a it's a weird dynamic because most people most people to them politics is yucky it's gross I don't want to be involved I want to stay out of it which again a lot of that I do understand um, for, uh, and, and it's, it's, it's gross. It's, it, I, I want to stay out or it's, you know, for some people, I don't know this one. I personally don't understand at all, but for them, it's, it's triggering. Like they, they, they just even not even necessarily the mention of a specific politician, just the mention of politics or policy. They just, they just immediately shut it down. I don't want to talk about that. I don't know. We don't, we don't need that, that we don't need to talk about it. We, we don't need to get into that. That's just, that's just cause causes uh division and, and we don't need to touch it. Uh, no, you, I, that's honestly something you need to get over. Uh, and, and we should be involved in politics. Now here's my, one, here's my number one reason why, because politics is one of those things gross or not or any or or bad or or good or not whatever politics is one of those things that it it literally affects each one of our lives in in just about every single thing that we do so it it just does you know when you go buy something when you get gas when you buy a car when you buy a house when when you get a paycheck, how much money you can keep from that paycheck. Like almost uh, the food, the, the quality of the food that we eat, that's on the shelves at the grocery store and the prices that are fa- every politics touches all of that, all of the aspects of our life. The, the, the medic Medicare, um, uh, the, the, yes, the, the healthcare that we receive, um, the, uh, all of it, it, it is, all touched by politics. So if if something is that big, is that widespread, why would you as a Christian want to completely pull out of it and completely stray away from it and stay away from it and and not want any part of it? Because if you cuz as a Christian, you sh- you should want to as a part of our calling, you should want to be a a positive impact in the in the culture and in the society and and in the the community that you're in so if we can do something as little as just cast a vote which is little but a big deal but we can part we can partake in something as little as just casting a vote as a christian that is still participating in doing what's good for our neighbor, loving our neighbor, um, and, and using the wisdom that God has given us to hopefully cast a vote for a, a candidate that is going to do well for the community, for the people. And so, yes, that would be my number one reason why we should participate is because politics touches everything. And if we want to be, if we want to have an influence in this world, we should not be afraid to to partake and to know about politics, to know about what is happening, what is going on in the government. Um, like I said, we live in a democracy, uh, well, a, a, a republic that acts as a democracy in how we elect. Um, so, again, there's that divine mystery of the fact that we can cast a vote, but God already knows because he appoints the leaders. Yes, but... We can still cast a vote at the end of the day. So we should partake. We should want to do what is good for our neighbors. We should want to uh, vote for policies that implement good things for the society. So just a couple thoughts, and then I'm going to get out of here. That was my reason for why we should. And as a Christian, I don't think you have an excuse. 
I I think you need to participate in in voting. And those that was my main reason. Now, things to consider when you're voting. Uh it's not a love letter for someone you love everything about. You're you're <sighs> See, some people again, this goes back to the stress, this goes back to the to the uh uh, this goes back to the the triggering part of of politics for some people, where they just they just see two people that they can't stand and immediately fall back and want nothing to do with it. I think that's soft and should not be the way that you go about it. You should be able to to look past um, look past some of the person. Now, obviously, if this person is is like just absolutely number one scumbag verifiably evil person in the world okay probably shouldn't shouldn't vote for him but the thing is you are voting for the the person but at the same time you're voting more so for the policies that that person is pushing so so it's not a love letter for someone you love everything about it's it's what are they going to push for when they're in office as the as a Christian, you're voting for a president, or you're voting for a governor, or mayor, or or senator, or or congressman. You're not voting for a pastor. The pat the the guidelines for a pastor is clearly laid out in Scripture. We know that. Uh, we see that you know Titus, First Timothy. We see those things. That's not what this is. Okay, this is this isn't even necessary. This isn't even even a spiritual leader. This is a government official. No one is perfect. No one ever will be. As people like to say, Jesus is not on the ballot. So yes, no one is perfect. You're not voting for a pastor. You're voting for a president. Go down the line. Governor, senator, all that. Um, <clears throat> you have to consider the full picture of the policies they're pushing that lead to human flourishing. So, so again... You're approaching this as a Christian. I'm talking to you Christians. If you believe that uh, abortion on demand, if you believe that men should be able to play in in girls' sports, uh, change in girls' locker rooms, boys should be in in girls' locker rooms and things like that, if you believe that, you know, drag queen story hour reading to your kids is is cool and is progressive and loving and, and something we should push, uh, if you believe that a, com- a, just about a completely open border bringing in who knows who, uh, with who knows what and, and an unlimited amount of sex trafficking of mostly minors, if you're cool with all that, then quite honestly, you have a party that you could vote for. That's the Democrats. But if you're a sane person, if you're a Christian, hopefully you're not actually thinking that those things I just mentioned is what human flourishing is. So again, you need, if you're thinking about, you want, you should, you should mainly think about the policies that you're voting for. And then, uh, under, under the influence of, do those policies lead to human flourishing, lead to human flourishing the way that, uh, scripture lays out. Um, so, it, it, again, I gave a, a pretty clear example of, of where I'm coming from, but um, policies that lead to human flourishing, that's the main point. This one is a big one, and, I, and I, I'm kind of going to end on this. A vote for a president, I'm, I'm staying on president right now because that's obviously the big one, that's tomorrow, or I'm sorry, today. Uh, I'm recording this the night before election day, but... A vote for a president is not just for that individual. You have to remember this. Don't get caught up in, in necessarily don't don't just get stuck on the the person, just that one person. Again, don't get triggered by that. Don't get stressed out by that where where you where you just completely shut down by that. Because this is why. A vote for a president is not just for that one person. It's also for every single person that the president is going to appoint. They appoint several thousand people. So, so when you vote for, 
when you vote for, say, a Trump, you're going to also get Robert F. Kennedy. You're going to get Elon Musk. You're going to get Tulsi Gabbard. You're going to get Vivek Ramaswamy. Uh, you're you're going to possibly get Ron Paul. That's some of the talk going around. So the same thing goes for Kamala. If you vote for Kamala, you're going to get whoever she wants and her team wants to appoint. So that's big and and is very important. Trump even admitted uh, recently that, that in his first term, he he had, because he was fresh and new and didn't know all the, you know, inside politician faces, uh, he admitted that he hired a lot of crappy people and that that will not be happening this time. I mean, you can see it just from the people I just named, uh, Tulsi, Musk, Kennedy. Those are those are people not messing around and and those are people also from typically outside of the Republican party that now have either actually joined the party or have have at least joined with Trump because they know that Trump if he gets elected is he's going to say hey Kennedy here's here's the FDA here's all the health stuff you 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 run it or you tell me what to do and that's going to get done. So again, a vote for a president is not just a vote for that one single individual. It's a vote for a, a couple thousand people administration that that president is going to going to put in. Again, it's also, you think of the judges, um, you talk about justice being done. How do you see how do you see it that you want justice to be done? Do you want it to be done by a, a super leftist, progressive, most likely Marxist agenda judge? Or do you want it to be done by a conservative, constitutional leaning judge? So that president that gets put in that position, if it comes to a point of, a, of, of appointing judges, uh, most importantly, Supreme Court judges, whoever is president at that point, is going to be the one that makes that call. It's very important. So we need to be involved. Uh, I, I heard, I heard some numbers that could be, could be around like 30 to 40 million Christians in America that are just sitting out uh, of the election Uh, for a number of the reasons I listed. It's, it's too gross. Uh, I don't see the point. Um, I don't need to do it. This goes back to I don't see a point, but I don't need to do it because God, you know, God already is going to appoint, you know, has who he's going to appoint. It's. It just it, it it's just something that we should be involved in, because, again, it goes to that it goes to that divine mystery of, yes, God appoints, but. In the country, in the time that we live, somehow in that mystery, we have a say in it. And so we should be wanting to be involved in that. And it's just very important. Uh, you, you shouldn't you shouldn't be scared of it. You shouldn't, uh, you know, stray away from it. Uh, you should be willing to enter into these conversations. Don't be one of those people that, that immediately like crouches down and gets scared of talking about politics. And you know, how dare we as Christians talk about that? Cause all we should be talking about is Jesus. And yes, we should be talking about Jesus. That should be the main thing. This is, uh, you know, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, as, as much as I love America, as much as I consider myself a Patriot, as much as I, you know, would love to see America thrive. I do know this isn't it guys like God is the main thing. And what I, but what also honestly, quite honestly annoys me is when Christ, when a lot of Christians do get, uh, they do bring up politics. They do, they do bring, you know, talk about it. They do get into it before they can even just talk about it. They get into this 30 minute disclaimer about how this is, you know, this is not the true kingdom. We should we we didn't we have to make sure we're God first. We're at, yes, I understand that, and every Christian gets that. That's why there's the hesitancy to even get involved in it in the first place. Like, 
We don't need to have these 20 minute, 30 minute disclaimers every single time politics comes up. It's, it's okay to just talk about it. It's okay to just like have these discussions. That's, that's a good thing. We should be able to show that we can have those discussions like a rational, logical, normal thinking person. So there it is. There's my rant. Uh, so I hope these, uh, these pointers, uh, helped a little bit if, if you maybe even are an undecided voter. Um, but just as a Christian, go do it, go be involved, think through these things and, and vote in a way that aligns with best it can with scripture because no no party no no platform political platform that we have aligns perfectly with scripture i 100 percent agree in, uh, with that um but we need to we need to be involved we need to vote because politics touches everything and so it is it is one small way that we can show uh we can show a, hopefully a love for our neighbor by voting for they're flourishing. So with that, remember, truth is strength.